The immense size of the B-36 added to its image as a great protector. A B-29 Super Fortress could nearly fit under its wing. B-36 wings were more than seven feet thick at the root, which would allow a crewman to crawl in and reach the engines and landing gear while in flight. It took ground crews six hours to prepare the bomber for a mission. The crew needed another hour for a pre-flight check involving no fewer than 600 steps. The first step was to climb the landing gear and remove the clamps that kept them from folding accidentally. By the end of 1948, SAC had 35 peacemakers at Carswell. Not long after the first B-36 was delivered, Strategic Air Command pilots and crews got a new commander, General Curtis LeMay. LeMay had most recently led the successful Berlin airlift. He complained that there was no SAC crew that could do a professional job. In the same way, he'd organized the bombing campaign against Germany. LeMay's solution was to take the best personnel from other air wings and form a nucleus around which he could upgrade combat readiness. Ten of the 15-member crew were positioned in the front. These included a commander, two pilots, two engineers, a navigator, a bombardier, two radio operators, and a forward observer. Five gunners occupied the rear compartments. Opinions varied, but most crew members loved the B-36. One pilot described flying it as similar to sitting on your front porch and flying your house around. Most pilots were either young and happy to be flying on such an important mission, or they were veterans who had flown inferior aircraft during World War II. But the Pentagon was not depending entirely on peacemaker development. B-29 super fortresses were still deployed within striking distance of Russia. The Boeing B-47 Stratojet was entering production, and the B-52 Strato Fortress was in its final design phase. In addition, jet pods had added so much weight and used so much fuel that the Peacemaker's combat radius had dropped to just over 3,000 miles. This led many to question why the B-36 was necessary. One answer may be that the Pentagon may have been less interested in the B-36 as a bomber than as a spy plane. In fact, one-third of SAC's Peacemakers were the reconnaissance bombers known as the RB-36. The RB-36 carried a camera the size of a compact car. The camera was set in a photo studio that replaced the forward bomb bay. It was loaded with a roll of film 18 inches wide and 1,000 feet long. The camera lens was so powerful that one photograph taken of a golf course from 40,000 feet clearly shows a golf ball. There may not have been many golf courses in the Soviet Union, but B-36 crews speak of 45-hour missions where they routinely flew higher than 50,000 feet. One pilot boasts of going to 58,000 feet and tells of flights over China where MiG fighters couldn't climb high enough to intercept them. 